Can someone please explain to me why this generation of 30 to 40 year olds look like they're in their 20s, but the 20 year olds look like they're in their early 40s? Welcome back to the channel, fellas. Today, we've got a jaw dropping story entitled Mom Celebrates Divorce and Instantly Regrets Because There's No Child Support. What starts as a celebration quickly turns into a harsh reality check when life after divorce doesn't go as planned. We'll dive into her choices, the unexpected fallout, and the lessons that came with it. If you love eye-opening stories like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's get into it. Men have the hardest fucking job in keeping women happy. You can't let us get too hot or too cold. You got to make sure you have a little snacky so that we don't get hangry. We love it when you're a cute, funny, naughty, not a creepy pervert. We want you to support and take care of us, but know that we are strong, independent women and we can take care of ourselves. There is always such a fine fucking line and you never know if you're on the right side of it because if you get it right, we change all the rules. Men are the easiest fucking creatures to keep happy. You gotta feed them, fuck them, and appreciate them. And that's it. All right, let's get real for a second. Dating today? It's a minefield, and honestly, it feels like men are the ones taking most of the hits. We've reached a point where many guys just don't approach women anymore. And let me tell you, it's not because we're lazy or uninterested. It's because the risk outweighs the reward, and yes, a lot of that blame falls squarely on women and how dating culture has shifted. Think about it. Guys have to navigate a world where rejection isn't just a simple no. Instead, it can come with public humiliation, being labeled as creepy, or even worse, the fear of accusations that can ruin a guy's reputation or life. And why? Because for some women, it's not about whether a guy is respectful or genuine. It's about whether he meets their hyper-specific criteria right off the bat. If you're not their type, suddenly even saying hello feels like a crime. Let's be honest here. Women have set the bar so high, it's almost unreachable for the average guy. And the worst part? Men are expected to approach, to take the risk, and to man up. But if it doesn't go exactly right, we're the bad guy. It's no wonder so many guys are like, you know what? Forget it. It's just not worth the hassle. This isn't about men being afraid of rejection. It's about the sheer hostility that often comes with it. Women, you say you want confident men, but at the same time, you've created a culture where confidence is punished unless it's wrapped up in the exact package you want. So tell me, how's that supposed to work? And let's be real, this isn't all women, but enough are playing into this dynamic that it's created a ripple effect. The result? More men are stepping back, not because we want to, but because we feel like we have to. I fucking hate it when people are like, oh, well, you don't owe him anything. If I've been speaking to a guy for a few months, let's say two months or whatever, and I've seen him or whatever the story is, in my eyes, yeah, I absolutely owe you something. Loyalty, respect, honesty, all the things that would come when you're in a relationship with a person or even when you're friends with a person. I don't understand this mentality of, well, you can do what you want. You don't have to tell him because you don't owe him anything. Like, I'm sorry, that is literally just... A shitty excuse to be a shitty person. When you are investing time into a person and they're investing time into you, the least you can do is be a decent human being. Especially when it pertains to their feelings. Which, let's be realistic, if you're speaking to them for a few months, there's going to be some kind of connection. Whether that's friendship-wise, platonic, whatever the fuck else. But I just hate it when people are like, oh, girl, you can do what you want, you don't owe him anything. Yeah, Mary, I do. Because I'm a decent human being. I do. All right, here's the thing. I know this might ruffle some feathers, but it needs to be said. Sadly, it feels like most women today just don't care about respecting a man or his feelings. Look, we're living in a time where men are constantly told to be in touch with their emotions, to open up, and to be vulnerable. And that's great. Men should be able to express themselves. But here's the problem. When we do, it's often met with indifference, mockery, or worse, outright rejection. How are we supposed to feel safe expressing ourselves when it seems like the very people we're opening up to just don't care? Think about it. Men are expected to be the protectors, the providers, and the problem solvers. But who's protecting us? Who's making sure our feelings are respected? Too often, it feels like the answer is no one, 
And it's not because men don't need or deserve respect. It's because, somewhere along the line, it became acceptable to overlook what men feel. Here's the reality. Respect goes both ways. You can't expect men to keep showing up, giving their all, and being there for you if you're not willing to meet them halfway. Men have emotions. We get hurt. And if you're not willing to acknowledge that, then honestly, how can you expect us to stick around? I'm not saying this is all women, but it's enough that it's become a pattern. And it's a pattern that's hurting men, pushing them away, and leaving them feeling like their emotions don't matter. If we want real connections, real relationships, this has to change. Some women think they have all the time in the world, but in reality, it's that exact mindset that's causing them to miss out on something real. And it's all because, deep down, they've started to think that men owe them something. If your girl came home every single day and was begging you for it and grabbing it and asking for it and wanting to do it, would you get annoyed by that or would you like it? I'd be married. I'd be married. That's it. Honest to God, I can't believe that I'm actually saying this, but I am really, really disappointed in how ungrateful women have become. I don't know how many doses of doses, actually, I don't know how many doses of delusion you guys had for breakfast, but the delusion is real and it's not the Sululu. It just makes you ungrateful. Because you, before you guys drag me, and call me a picnisha, I'm not saying all you hands need to settle with any and every dusty that the planet of Earth can offer. No. I say no to dusties. We don't give dusties a chance. Dusties need to clean themselves up. Ain't nobody like dust. Okay? But what I'm trying to say is when you do get you someone that is a provider, a protector, somebody that just loves you for who you are, and you're just so ungrateful to the point where you demand so much that you can't even do for yourself, sis, no. This man is going above and beyond to give you a life he can give you. But y'all just want more and more and more and more and more. And what makes it worse is y'all are all fighting for the same type of guys. That you actually just don't have access to. Here's the thing. Women today have so many choices. So many options. Dating apps. Social media. A world of guys ready to swipe right and offer them attention. It's easy to get caught up in the idea that you can just keep shopping around for something better and that you'll never run out of men willing to chase after you. But here's the catch. A lot of women are taking this for granted, and it's starting to show. When you believe that you'll always have someone better lined up around the corner, you stop valuing the guy who's standing right in front of you, especially the great ones. And don't get me wrong, we're talking about men who are serious, who are respectful, who are genuine. But women aren't giving them a real shot. Why? Because they think there's always something better out there. And I'm not just talking about being picky. I'm talking about the entitlement some women feel. It's almost like they believe men should just prove themselves over and over again. As if we owe them something. That's where the problem lies. Men are expected to constantly give. But when it comes time to take us seriously, they often don't. It's not that women are ungrateful. But more and more... They just don't take men seriously anymore. They're so used to having all these options, they don't appreciate what's right in front of them. And I'm telling you, that's a huge mistake. Because while women are out here playing the field, some of the best men are slipping through the cracks, thinking they're not good enough, thinking they don't measure up. Oh my god, I'm officially divorced! Yes! Sad. Shame. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my. You. <laughs> I'm officially primary custodian of the kids. What about the child support? That's it? Tony, that's crazy. Why? Are you getting me? Not all of this financial burden with my children is on me? What? Man, this is 
genuinely one of my worst fears in life, homie, is to wipe a woman up like this. <laughs> Celebrating divorce. They're, she's doing it just to get the child support. There are women out here who will ruin your motherfucking life, homie. I make these videos for a reason. I'm trying to get you guys on your grind. I'm trying to get you guys on your purpose. And to stay away from women that are going to ruin you, man. There are women with one fucking choice that we make out here as men that will ruin your fucking life, man. It's a cold game we're playing. It really, really is. You end up with a woman like this, your life's going to be nothing but headaches and drama and bullshit and... <sighs> There's too many men out here going through this shit. Get to the gym. Work on yourself. Build yourself. Work on finances. Work on building your life. Stop settling with women like this, man. Stay cold. So, here's the thing. This woman celebrates her divorce like it's the best decision she's ever made, only to instantly regret it. Why? Well, it's all because there's no child support coming in. Now, don't get me wrong. I get it. Divorce can feel like freedom. Especially if you've been stuck in a relationship that's toxic or no longer works. But in this case, this woman's big mistake was thinking the grass would be greener on the other side without considering the reality of what happens after the divorce papers are signed. She was probably thinking, I'm free. No more dealing with him. No more stress. But then reality hit hard. The child support she thought would be automatic? Yeah, it wasn't. And without that financial support coming in every month, she's left scrambling, trying to make ends meet. Here's the thing. A lot of women think they can walk away from their marriages and have everything fall into place, especially when kids are involved. But when you're relying on someone else for support, you can't just assume things are going to work out the way you want them to. It's not just about having the freedom. It's about being financially prepared to take on everything that comes after the split. And honestly, this isn't just about the money. It's about responsibility. Divorce isn't something you walk into blindly. Sure, it may feel like the best thing at the moment, but the aftermath is real. And sometimes, you have to think about the long-term impact on both yourself and your kids. I think I just met the man that I'm going to marry, and I just want to document this in case it comes true. I went on a first date in New York City tonight with this man who, within minutes of meeting him, I felt like I had known a lifetime. I have never felt so safe and seen and wanted and heard and understood by anyone in my life. I used to think that people who believed in love at first sight were crazy. But I think it's just because I hadn't experienced it before. And love at first sight isn't what you see. I mean, he's gorgeous, but he's brilliant and brave and strong and fearless and resilient. The date was amazing. We ran around New York City and I felt like little me again. Everything was perfect until the end when he told me he was gay. This is like Big Brother having a conversation with his little sister. And something I've noticed is an influx of videos of women saying where are all the single men at but every time i go to the comment section it's a bunch of angry men talk about go be with the bear we're by ourselves we don't want to be bothered anymore and to be honest i understand where those men are coming from but a lot of you aren't going to be happy with your comment section and i get it at the same time a lot of you have to understand for about the past two two and a half years y'all have been tearing down men talking about leave us alone we don't want to talk to y'all y'all aren't worth a damn don't approach us. We just want to be with our girlies and have espresso martinis. Cool. But all of a sudden, when it starts to get cold outside, now all of a sudden, y'all talk about where are all the single men at. That bear conversation took a lot of men over the edge. So like I said, holding your hand, having this conversation, before you make that video, please be prepared that your comment section might not turn out the way you thought it would. And to be honest, y'all need to go on this like political run to campaign about how much you do like men for at least a year before your comment section might be okay when y'all talk about where are all the single men at. All right, let's address something that's been building for years now. You've probably heard it yourself. Women saying, we hate men, don't talk to us in the gym, don't approach us in public, don't even perceive us. And now, they're wondering why guys just aren't pulling up anymore. Let me break it down. The damage is done? Guys have been hearing this nonstop for the past three years. We've been told to stay away, to leave them alone, to mind our business. And guess what? A lot of us finally got the message. But now, those same women are asking, where did all the good men go? Well, here's the answer. They're not dealing with the drama anymore. They're at peace. And here's the kicker. Women who actually deserve good men, they have good men. These men aren't angry bitter, or caught up in the chaos. They're calm, 
they're focused, and they're building meaningful lives with women who appreciate them. They're not trying to win over someone who's shouting, I'm a strong, independent woman, every five minutes, while simultaneously making it clear they don't want or need a man. The truth is, the rest of us, the ones who've been told we're not wanted, not needed, we've checked out. And honestly, can you blame us? You can't spend years telling an entire gender they're unwanted and then wonder why they're not lining up to approach you anymore. Here's what's happening now. A generation of men with nothing to lose is rising. Men who aren't chasing anyone's validation. Men who've walked away from the idea that they need to prove themselves to people who don't even respect them. It's not anger. It's clarity. And for a lot of guys, that clarity feels like freedom. Hey everyone, I seem to blow up the radical left last night. I filed a resolution that would ban biological men from women's private spaces on the Hill. Um, I'm just getting started and I've already <laughs> nowhere near stopping and the death threats that I'm receiving now aren't gonna stop me either. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, come at me bro, or bros in this case. Um, I'm not gonna take your threats for an answer. I'm gonna fight like hell for women and girls to keep men out of women's private spaces to include bathrooms, restrooms, locker rooms, changing rooms, you name it. You are not welcome. Imagine dedicating your life to advocating for women's rights only to have the concept of woman itself devalued into something that anyone can claim without having lived the reality. The saying goes, just because you draw a line on a squash doesn't make it a watermelon. It doesn't matter how much you paint it, reshape it, or try to convince others otherwise. A squash remains a squash. Similarly, it doesn't matter how much someone changes their appearance, adopts mannerisms, or demands recognition. If they weren't born as a woman, they don't have the lived experience of one, and they never will. It's not about hate or exclusion. It's about preserving the meaning of what it is to be a woman. If the lines keep being blurred, then what's left of the rights and identity women have fought so hard to achieve? At some point, women need to stand up and say enough is enough. Womanhood isn't a costume, and it's not up for redefinition. It's time to stop pandering to ideologies that erase what it truly means to be a woman. Part of the problem is because every time women mess up, it's always I was young and dumb, and I just get really tired of the excuses. It's not you were young and dumb, it's you were irresponsible. Men invent, men invent solutions to everything. They literally do. If you get herpes, they have medication that you can take every day. They have technology that makes it way less easy to transmit. And the number one thing you can do is wear a condom. And yet, it's so crazy to me that you would sleep with that level of a guy, that irresponsible, and then be surprised when you catch something. This woman is so selfish. She found a guy that accepted her for that and then proceeded to make a podcast telling everyone else she has it. Because I am now going to not stop talking about the fact that I have herpes. We make irresponsible decisions, right? Casual sex, irresponsible. And they keep making technology because there's so much money in solving our irresponsible problems. An example, we all got tattoos when we were like 18. An example of ways that you can make money is tattoo removals, right? So now you have new diseases coming up because never in history have we been this promiscuous. We're seeing us become more and more promiscuous. So then there's a lot of money if 20% of the population has herpes or 8% of the population has herpes, there is a ton of money in making a cure. Here's the thing. Women, especially those raised by single mothers, are becoming more and more promiscuous. And yeah, I said it. Let's unpack why this is happening and how it's shaping today's culture. The way a lot of women are raised today plays a huge role in their outlook on relationships and intimacy. When you grow up in a single-parent household, particularly one led by a single mother, you're often not seeing the dynamics of a healthy, long-term partnership. Instead, what's often modeled is independence at all costs, sometimes at the expense of understanding commitment, loyalty, and self-respect. 
And let's be real, the media and society aren't helping. Women are constantly bombarded with messages that promiscuity equals empowerment, that living your best life means chasing hookups and avoiding any kind of emotional investment. But here's the thing, they don't talk about the consequences. They don't talk about how that mindset leads to broken relationships, trust issues, and a whole lot of emptiness. Here's where I'm putting the blame. It's on women. The choices you make, the values you uphold, the way you carry yourself, it's all on you. You can't keep blaming men for not wanting to commit when you're out here treating relationships like they're disposable. And if you're raised in an environment where long-term commitment isn't prioritized, that cycle just keeps repeating. Now, I'm not saying this applies to all women raised by single mothers. But let's be honest, there's a pattern here. When you grow up without seeing a man and a woman building something stable together, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that relationships don't matter. Or worse, that you don't need to take them seriously. And that mindset? It's hurting you more than you realize.